Hey everybody, Joe Joseph here for the DailySheeple.com, and this is your new shot. So to Zero Hedge we go, where they highlight the cryptocurrency concentration. We um we often talk about how these bubbles are created in the stock market, <laughs> and also how the wealth is concentrated to within a very small, small minority of people that really control the vast majority of wealth in the world. And interestingly enough, as Bitcoin has exploded, what they're coming to find out based on some of the metrics that they're seeing is that just 4% own over 95% of Bitcoin. So that's your cryptocurrency concentration. Since Bitcoin's been making a lot of news lately, the cryptocurrency shot up in value by over 2,000% or 200%, pardon me, in 2017, making many people fear that the market is in a bubble. Last week, China decided to close its Bitcoin exchanges, which caused investors around the world to panic about the currency's long-term viability. But the question is asked, how many people own Bitcoin and how is the currency distributed around the world? So... Uh, a website, howmuch.net, actually did a little research into this. And they kind of graphed it all out. And they figured out that Bitcoin has a value, the whole market itself is a value of about $60 billion. Now, if you want to compare that, that's bigger than several well-known companies like FedEx or uh, General Motors. So you're talking about a fairly sizable market. $60 billion is nothing to shake a stick at. Now, that value is divided uh, based on the Bitcoin market by address. So they take it and they look at all the addresses that every Bitcoin is tied to. And what they come to find out is over 95% of all Bitcoin in circulation are owned by 4% of the market. As a matter of fact, 1%, top 1%, own half of the entire market. So you got 4% that own 95% of the market. You have 1% that own half. Now, how much.net says there's a couple of limitations to the data. Say, so more importantly, each address can represent more than one individual person. An obvious example would be like a Bitcoin exchange or a wallet which holds the currency for a lot of different people. And of course, that's very common. And they say another limitation has to do with the anonymity. If you want to remain completely anonymous, you can use something called a coin join, a process that allows users to group similar transactions together. And this makes it seem like two people are using the same address when in reality, they're really not. So there's some limitations there. It's complex. And they try to break it down as, as, as good as possible. But Bitcoin is really, if you think about it, just another type of fiat currency. But it's a fiat currency outside of the control of central banks, which to a lot of people is a very attractive thing. So very much like dollars or euros. Fiat currency backed by nothing. But the main difference is that Again, no central bank, no sovereign government is backing it. And it lives entirely online, not in the physical world at all. Although you do have your ATMs breaking up, uh, popping up here, you know, your Bitcoin APM, uh, ATMs. Now it says that this is possible thanks to something called the blockchain. And banks and companies must keep detailed records of where they send money marking it possible to detect possible fraud or criminal activity. Now, the blockchain works differently because it breaks each transaction into tiny components and routes the pieces through a computer network and directs them to a recipient who can then reassemble the code together. Now, if you don't have the right key, you can't own a Bitcoin. And if you aren't at the right digital address, a la like your, uh, your home IP address, for instance, then you can't receive Bitcoin. So the technology is already hard to understand and it presents challenges for companies and people who want to use it 
That's why folks typically turn to vendors like Coinbase to handle their transactions, which, of course, you know now, the federal government, the IRS, has asked Coinbase to turn over their data so that they can see who's using um, Bitcoin to skirt their tax liability. And that's going to open up a huge Pandora's box. You see, people have been using Bitcoin and it's been flying under the radar and you have to you have to think or know or expect that the federal government, just like in any other opportunity, they salivate over opportunities to take money. You know, it used to be that the government actually worked for the people at one point in time, maybe for 15 minutes in our existence, perhaps that happened. But at one point in time, it was envisioned that the government was basically owned by the people. Now, Act of 1871 incorporates the United States and then the United States via the uh, Social Security, we all became basically stakeholders in the United States. Citizenship is another way of calling it stakeholder. You are a owner of the corporation. And so this corporation is trying to get as much money as it can possibly get its hands on, which every corporation does. It's what they do. And Coinbase has fought this, but they've lost in court and it looks like they're going to have to turn over their data, which means that anybody that's making transactions. And in this case, I think the government asked for anybody that makes $20,000 in transactions over the course of a year, they want to see that data. So if you do that, get ready, stand by to stand by capital gains tax may be coming your way, but you can pay for services and goods online using your digital Coinbase wallet says, but be very careful. People can steal your digital wallet and the thieves can be untraceable. That's the difference between using, say, your, uh, uh, your regular bank card uh, and, then, and, and Bitcoin. That's not to, you know, scare you away from it. So there's only a very limited number of Bitcoin wallet providers out there. And it's not like you can just go to your local bank and buy Bitcoin. So the big takeaway from all this is that if you're considering purchasing some Bitcoin, you first of all have very limited options. And there are only a few key players in the game where you can park your investment. And if you do make that purchase, understand that it is extremely speculative and it's totally unregulated. So that means that you're subject to the boom and bust cycle, which we are anyway with central banking. But it's one of those cognitive dissonance things. They throw it out there. Central banks, ah, they're supposed to be able to manage it. So there is no boom and bust. Well... History has shown that that doesn't happen. There's still boom and bust. However, those boom and busts are amplified because there is no body that regulates that flow. So it becomes much more of a roller coaster ride. Now, right now, you're on that meteoric rise upward, kind of like a roller coaster going up that first mount, that first hill till you get to the top. And after you get to the top, normally it's that in your, your stomach going up into your throat experience as you just do a straight drop all the way to the bottom. Is that the way that Bitcoin is going to go? I have no idea. But I can tell you that the growth that they're seeing and that's being realized with Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies can be very tempting to get into. Whether or not you do it is up to you. But the similarities between the investment hype and hysteria with Bitcoin and the investment hype and hysteria that gripped the nation during the 1920s where people were taking out loans, remortgaging houses, and taking whatever savings they had and throwing it in the stock market, thinking that it was a surefire bet, that it was never going to crash, that, you know, depressions were a thing of the past. And a lot of people were ruined because of the fact that the wealth was so concentrated, that the ownership of the market was so concentrated, that when those people that controlled the vast majority of wealth and credit decided to pull the rug out from underneath the market, they did so, market crashed. First of all, they sold high, market crashed, they bought low, they made a ton of money. And it was one of the biggest transfers of wealth that we've seen. And I fear that what we're seeing now 
could be a setup for a gigantic transfer of wealth. So stand by to stand by. I'm Joe Joseph. This was the DailySheeple.com's News Shot. Feel free to comment below and visit our website at thedailysheeple.com. Hashtag wake the flock up. Have a great day, everybody.